What's up guys? It's the Creature Preacher. I'm getting ready to do a uh, water change here, but before I get into it, just wanted to show you a couple things that I think make water changes really easy for me. Um, first of all, this uh, water siphon here. I forget what brand this is. This is the Aqua Pro, I think. No, this is not the Aqua Pro. I have to look at the brand of this, but it's the green brand. There's a blue brand and a green brand. And, uh, and so this is very convenient if for anyone with multiple fish tanks, large fish tanks, anything like that. But here, I, I ran my holes to a hole in my sink. So you see my dishwasher is there. And I ran that, which goes to my basement. And uh, so I don't siphon to my kitchen sink. Um, wife. You know, she's not too excited about fish water in her sink. So I don't siphon to my kitchen sink. I siphon to a utility sink in my basement. Show you, I'll show you that. So I siphon here to this utility sink uh, in my basement again. So you, you see the, the siphon uh, there all hooked up, ready to go. And of course, you just turn on the water to get the siphon going. Just refilled another tank, so yep, just turn on the water. I always use cold water just because, of course, the hot water costs a little bit more. But actually, since I have that hose, as you saw upstairs, already in the tank and the line is already filled with water, I am just going to take this off. Take this off. I'm trying to do this all in one hand. Unscrew this. unscrew this right here and then I've got that and of course the water is already in the water line and I've got that switch on the siphon kit turned off so it's not suctioning this so this water is not moving here it'll move a little bit but it's not really moving so I just put that in there leave it like that and we'll go back upstairs so now we're back upstairs all I have to do is hit this switch, flip this, make sure that this is in the water, and there you go, siphoning. So even though it has that switch on it where I can run the water and that water is going to siphon to save on water, if you, uh, when you're doing multiple tanks, you just fill the, leave that water line full, um, make sure that you know the hose is in there when you're siphoning. And uh, switch that so you know the siphon is really doing the work as opposed to having to run your faucet you know for you know, 10 20 minutes however long you're doing water changes uh, so we'll do this water change here and I'll tell you a little bit about this tank while we do it so again this tank is my African cichlid tank I've got a cascade canister filter uh, the 1500 version that does about 265 gallons and then also an aqua clear 100 gallon on here. So definitely over filtrating on this cichlid tank as uh, is common and needed for cichlids, especially with the load. Now the fish load in this tank is a little low right now. Um, I've got some fry you see right here. I've got a breeding pair of Hongai cichlids in here and uh, they've had fry. They haven't had any fry in a while, but as you see, there's growing here. And with that, just the, the balance of the tank is a little off. So I'm kind of waiting for these fry to grow up a little before I add uh, additional fish to it. Just to make sure that they're gonna do okay. And I took them out for a minute to, I put them in a grow out tank and then I put them back in here when they were a little bigger. And I could have let them grow out a little lot longer since the, the fish in here are a little bigger. I've got a Taiwan reef. You can't really see him. I don't know if he's in the camera shot, but he's over there. There you go. Taiwan reef cichlid. Um, some bumblebee cichlids. And the, this is the female here. So that's the, the breeding female. I don't know if you can see her very well. But she's there. The male is hiding, of course, because you know we're changing the water. Um, and I've got a giraffe cichlid in there. 
I know they'll get bigger. This is, like I said, just a 75, uh, but they're just so pretty. Uh, I love those fish. I had a couple of them, but again, with as any cichlid keeper knows, you know, it's um, not an exact science, and sometimes you you lose some fish. Um, but one cool thing about this tank that I must mention, this looks like the uh, Caribbean Sea brand of cichlid substrate. It's not. It's pool filtration sand and black sand mixed together to give that white black dynamic there a uh, little more cost effective option. Here again is pumice rock. So if you watched uh, the slider video, you saw me working with pumice rock, but then again, all of these holes that you see in these rocks were made by me as far as just drills. Drilled out and kind of banged on just to make a, a little bit more uh, natural looking. But this rock, it tends to float, but uh, after having it, soaking it, initially when I got it for a good few days, and then of course when it got into the tank, it does just fine now. And you can move it around as far as to uh, switch up the territory for the fish as needed with cichlids. I don't know if you can see here. there there's a crate at the bottom of this tank just to give the rock a little bit more support and keep it from uh, that weight of the rock on the glass but pumice rock is actually more lightweight than a lot of other regular rocks so uh, again I love the pumice rock in this tank, it's worked out really well. I only do maybe about a 25% water change on this. And like I said, you guys see I'm not really digging up the substrate. The cichlids do a good job of digging up the substrate themselves. Uh, so uh, I'm just changing the water. Uh, the filter I change uh, maybe once a month and I alternate You know those two. Sometimes I'll change the 100 uh, gallon aqua clear. Sometimes I'll change the uh, pin plaques which I'll show you here in just a second uh, where that's set up. So this is under the tank and uh, like I said I got the pin plaques there uh, here since it's behind the couch and it's a little dark I've got a little light that just screws in it's battery operated that I can touch turns on and off that way so, and then uh, a few just general supplies down here. You see the way that I've got my surge plugs elevated, screwed into the um, stand. So, of course, it gives that natural drip um, drip line. If there were to be a leak or anything like that, nothing's going to get into the into the electrical part of it. So, uh, just a couple things that here, and I've got. I don't keep a lot of supplies under this tank just because it's behind my couch as I said so I don't access it except when I'm doing water chains uh, but just a few things in here now as that fills back up um, you know like I said sitting here on my couch so uh, I, I love this tank I love just being able to hang out here and you know while I'm you know watching the show or just reading the book or whatever the case is uh, you know getting to enjoy enjoy the fish and uh, and watch them and it's in a central place in my house where, you know, obviously walking by a lot. And so definitely a, a fun tank. Uh, but yeah, let me know if you guys have any questions uh, about this tank. Um, any, you know, tips, any tricks that you're using to make your, your tank special, make your tank unique, make your water change process fluent. And if you like the video, please click the like button. Please subscribe. And I appreciate, as always, you taking time to watch my channel and uh, check it out. Thank you.